Welcome back, welcome back, clarifiers. I would like to welcome you to the part eight of 12 live sessions with Tony and Alexi. He's gonna be joining us within any moment now at 12.58. We officially start at one and he's he just jumped on. I waved to him. He's joining. Way I love technology. Instagram can be such a beautiful thing. And in this case, right now, this is a beautiful thing. What's so, up? what's up? What's up? Welcome back. How are you feeling today in a nutshell? In a nutshell? Um, yeah, Greek walnut. Ecstatic. My hair is a bit even kind of frizzy. You can kind of see it's like. Ah, uh, nope. It looks very, very jelly from me. It looks jelly from here. Like it's gelled and. Whoppa! Nice. So, a good day today for you? Yeah, work went really smooth. And um, I had a couple cool things that I wrote down in my little notebook realizations because I have it now. I had a moment in a bathroom today. I had a moment Ooh. while I was eating food today mm. and breakfast. It was pretty cool. So, mm. I highly suggest people have a notebook. A small one like this that can easily fit in your back pocket in the same one. I put it in the same spot my wallet is. That way it doesn't get crushed and it's always there. Um, when the so student yeah, is ready, cool. the teacher comes. Oh, and this morning I woke up and based off everything we did yesterday, if we were going to do like a commercial for like the concept, this was like one of the ideas that popped up. Are you trying to run a program made for Windows 94 on Windows 10 and wondering why your life sucks? <laughs> oh man! Because <laughs> uh, that's basically what it is. When you have an old subconscious program running from way back when, that's like Windows ninety four era. <laughs> We're in like Windows ten now, man, and you're trying to run that same damn program, and you're wondering why your life yeah. sucks. <laughs> well said. I like that. Definitely. Do yeah. Apply that so, so I wrote that one down. That was that was a funny, funny one this morning. Nice, nice. Awesome. Well, let's jump into it. Introduce yourself to the beautiful, awesome people on here, and I'll do the same. Hey, everybody. My name is Anthony Desatnikov. I'm a student of life, and to summarize what that is, it's somebody who is obsessed with patterns, learning, and essentially just trying to see, treating every experience as a lesson. They look at life as basically school, in a way. Um, so yeah, that's who I am internally uh, for work. I do construction work for a company called Bella Home Builders. I build custom homes in Saratoga Springs, New York. And then I'll show you, I was actually up till one in the morning last night and I built this new baby right here. It's not completely finished. I loaded up with stones, but hey, you know our diagram that has a circle with a half? I was trying to figure out how to mount that really big circle that I had to this because I really wanted to. And then it just like hit me after we were drawing yesterday. I was, I'm like, ooh, it'll be a perfect metaphorical representation of the paradigm, the conscious and subconscious. Circle nice. divided in half. So <laughs> it was a fun little um, actual physical application of what we were doing yesterday. So awesome. yeah, that was, uh, it, my night ended off late, but it was good. So you know, obviously woke up a bit tired, but I felt like a champion, had a good day at work. Awesome. And awesome. after this, I get to work on that more. So yeah, that's who I am, and uh, that's what's up. Awesome. Well, my name is Alexi Katko. If no, if you don't know, uh, Anthony's uncle of uh, yeah, I was thirteen when he was was a little 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 boy and entered in this world. <laughs> I love helping people understand understand uh, concepts more uh, concepts that are a little more challenging to understand. I just love helping people get their aha moment, like ah, oh, that's what I need to do, or that's what it means. Specifically, the clarifiers I started because I wanted to help people learn how to become better mentors. And right now, Anthony and I are doing a 12-day sesh live Instagram, helping people learn how to reprogram your mind actually, like practically speaking, how do you reprogram your mind? And that's what we're talking about, these 12 videos. And yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's, that's what I am. That's what I do. That's what I love to do. Yeah. I grew up with... Hey, what's up? I grew up in a world where explanations were very limited and scarce, and so that was my challenge, and that's what I want to. That's a pain point I want to alleviate in other people's lives. That being said, 
back at the uh, at the uh, I am the author series, how to reprogram your brain, how to actually practically do it in actual and practical steps. <laughs> <laughs> so yesterday, the, yeah, we've been going back and forth. I would share something, and then the following day, Anthony would give it back, like share it back with me, and give you a recap. Making, yep, Boys um, and girls. He was he was teaching, doing the teaching. So two days back, he showed me this process. Yesterday, I ran him through the process. So, yeah. Today we are actually today we're even gonna take we're gonna take what they call a fifty thousand foot view. So the the one that we just went through the, yesterday and the day before that was we were looking at we we're looking at the forest. Um, we started off with looking at the dirt and the the bark and the beetles and everything, and then we slowly started zooming out, zooming out. And today is gonna be the fifty thousand foot view of the process so pretty much it will help somebody who's getting into this or like say that they watched an ad or they heard us talking about this like hey this is an awesome thing how to practically reprogram your mind they're like great what's that all about this is what's going to answer that question so you're going you're basically this is going to be the thesis thesis yeah yeah the, the thing got it that's a very very good way of putting it you you wordsmith you <laughs> mm-hmm it just comes to me. Ah, I ain't that smart, and I don't read a lot of dictionaries, people, but uh, <laughs> I'm pretty bad at spelling. <laughs> yes, you just said uh, a bunch of I am's, and uh, careful what you say of what I am is. I'm a bad speller, don't worry. <laughs> just a little just practice. the occasional word here and there. Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't figure out. I, l- I leave spelling to the pros. <laughs> <laughs> So I like see, it like that. You're gonna, you're gonna see. Uh, I'm just saying what I do, uh, how I say it, because my, uh, my uh, spelling. Let's just say I cheated on every spelling test I've ever taken. <laughs> Take it in. <laughs> I'm great at concepts, but will, and that's what I'll stick to. There is no buts. So as you see, I just took out my uh, handy dandy tripod, and I'll flip mm-hmm. this over to go right onto the screen. That's gonna go this direction. Bam. Okay. Whoopa. Come on. Boom. Is this good, like this angle, Anthony? Yeah, this... just get rid of that napkin. Yeah, yeah, I'll get, I'll get rid of it. <laughs> I'll get rid of it. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whoopa. Let me um, I mean... It... There's too much contrast right now. Yeah, yeah, we, I'm, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna zoom in closer. Hold on, you're gonna see. Boom, this right here. This is what we're gonna see, and therefore I'm gonna zo- go in. Wow, this thing. Okay. The angle is awkward. In the sense that you're gonna be writing sideways. Well, I'm gonna be writing like this. On what side of the screen is this for you? That's my top right corner, and when you write to as you're writing, so you want it like this. So this is yeah. my left. Yeah, there that's you go. how you want it, right? Yeah, there you go. Okay, so let me flip it around. Then I was like, I, I couldn't remember what side of the table I had this last. Yes, just like that. There we go. Now it's from like a uh, perspective view, yep. as if I was looking at the paper. Boom. Boom! That good? Boom! Yeah, that's perfect. I can see okay. that clearly. I could see it clearly now. Okay, so it starts off with now, this. Is that a There's... small piece of paper or a big paper? Yep. That's a small one. It's a small piece of paper. Wow. Are you ready, Essie? I'm ready! Okay, let me start here. Okay, we're going to start with a basic image of the mind. We're not going to dive into it. We're not going to really get into the explanation of it. Today, we're just going to explain what is this whole, this, this, this thing of reprogramming your mind all about. So, I'm going to write a basic image of the mind. Okay. So, a basic image of the mind 
looks like this. It always starts with a circle and a line down through the halfway mark. We'll say the top part of the brain is what's called the conscious mind. That's where you see, that's where you smell, taste, touch, hear. That's all where the conscious information is coming in. That's what your consciously thoughts are created, where you new thoughts are created. And then there is the bottom part, and the bottom part is the subconscious mind. Okay? In the subconscious mind, that part of your brain takes care of your body functions. It, that's where your habits are. Okay? Stuff like walking. Things like driving. Okay? For example, when you drive somewhere, how you, Anthony, obviously drive. So for all of you out there who drive or bicycle or walk somewhere, and then you're like, once you get somewhere, you're like, well, I don't even remember getting here. That's your subconscious doing. You don't think about driving. You just get there. Oftentimes, you listen to something on the radio or talk to a person. You dr how can you drive something I mean, so half, most To be honest, like most of the time when I'm driving, I'm listening to music. So at the end of the day, I'm driving on muscle memory, I would say, which would yeah, be the yeah. subconscious mind. That's where... Because I'm not... Yeah, so I see what you're saying. So that's where all that's what the subconscious. So I'm just trying to give you a basic idea of what what lies in the subconscious part of your brain and what's in the conscious mind. So the five senses are the basics. If you go your eyes, you down, you you see, you smell, you taste, you hear, and you touch. Those are the five major senses. Um, and so that is the basic overview, okay, of what a brain looks like, what your m mind actually looks like. As the uh, great quote by Dr. Thurman Fleet, or I'm going to give you a summarized version of it, he says, if an image does not have a picture, or if your mind does not have an image, it's chaos. So he created this image, this uh, image of what the mind looks like. There's a little more to it, but today we're just going to keep with this, okay? So you have a mind, your mind comprised of your conscious part, and then your subconscious part. And now we're talking about how do you reprogram your mind? We're going to dive into that process a little and what it looks like and how you actually get programmed. Okay? Does that make sense? Any questions right now? No. No? Okay. I'm going to grab another piece of paper because this is the basic introduction. Keep it up there. And go like this. So let's say you are... This is you right here, okay? And you think a thought, and we'll call that thought A. Okay? Make sense so far? Mm -hmm. This is you, and you just have a desire, right? And you're like, okay, I have a desire to get thought A come to, like, I'd really love for this to happen. I'd really love for this to happen. And so you take that thought, and you say, A, hey, this is like step one. You're like, okay, I'm going to just write, you think, this is the actual process. You think, I want A. Boom. So that's the first step. And how many times, when was the last time, Anthony, you thought of something that you really wanted? It doesn't matter how big or small. Food before I got before I came to do the video. Okay, when I was perfect. Coming home from work, it was just like. So that's one of these. I want food and water. Yeah. So you think? How about a thought where it's like that will like bigger picture thought, like something you want. I want to see my girl. <laughs> in Serbia. Okay, so you want to go visit your girlfriend in Serbia? Very specific thought. Also, like, ooh, I want to do this. And so. Step two in this process is, I'll just say, life comes together to create environment – this might sound a little confusing. 
So life comes together to create an environment for thought A. An environment. An environment for thought A to be the outcome. So, let me draw that out what that would actually look like in, in a picture. So, here's you. You thought of thought A, right? So, that's you and you're like, okay, so what now? What happens now? Boom. You're thinking this thought. You have emotions and you're putting this emotion like, I want this to happen. All of a sudden, as if by magic, your, your thoughts... Say, okay, to make the, a, the thought A come to reality or give it the environment for it to come to reality, here's the first thing that had to happen. Then it's like, okay, then step two had to happen. Then step three comes along. And then step four. And then, say, step five. After step five, again, don't look at the numbers, but let's just theoretically say it took five steps for your thought to come to reality. And now, A, your thought A is finally, A is now able to be made real. Real or, yeah, real reality. Boom. So this whole process is what we call the experience. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me know when you're ready to go, to go on. I'm good. Okay, so now the experience happened. So we're looking at the experience, right? It happened so that your thought right here could become reality. Okay, so I'm going to write that, write that out because that's very key. So now this is a big one. Now the quote-unquote experience happened so that thought A could become a reality. Let me give you an example before we go further. When I worked at a bed manufacturing company in Albany, Every, almost every day, because if I took a slight detour, I would be able to go to, um, I would go to a Dunkin' Donuts, grab a cup of coffee, sit there, and then I'd go to the airport that was only a few minutes down the road. And for me, I was just like, I would go to the airport and I'd sit there and I'd imagine like, oh, I'd really love to get a job that would allow me to go across the country and see, see America. Preferably, it would be awesome to be able to get <laughs> to stay in one town or city one week at a time and really get to know the place and try coffee everywhere and just just that kind of life. And so that was the original thought. The first step was I'm like, okay, I got well for me to happen for that to happen. I had the idea to go part time. I went part time. Step two, uh, with my free time, I had uh, I would work two days a week. So the other three days that I would be busy or no, we had a four day week. So the other two days that now I have free, I go and spend time in Panera Bread and do studying. And so while I was in Panera Bread, I meet this guy uh, from a national company that does remodeling and has everything I wanted. He's like, hey, you want to work? So I'm like, yeah, sure. So I sign up. Then I put my two week notice, two, two, two week notice in and then it happened. Right. And then I got the job. And so now I have the ability to make my dream come true. 
So I took Your all these steps. Come true. Yeah. So now the environment for my thought to come true is able. So I all those steps had to happen for the environment to be um, like after after I met him and I I'm like okay now I got to um, I have to put in all my paperwork. At that point, the environment is ripe from for my idea to become reality, and so I still have to actually go take uh, drug tests and all that stuff. And then so the experience right here, this whole experience was just creating the environment right here for things to happen. So this was a positive experience. And so this was positive. There's times when you have a negative thought and the same thing, the same process happens. Uh, like I was sharing with you, I wanted to, when I was a kid, I had all these ideas of just being in a hospital and people surrounding me and being all pity and all that about me. And so a bunch of things had to happen. And then my experience was the explosion. And so because the explosion happened, now I, it was ripe to be for my, my idea to come to reality. And, and this is the big, big challenge right here is that the emotion of the experience is where things take a turn. Okay? So the experience happens. Let me, let's, let's write that down. Because that's also very key. The emotions I'm gonna underline emotions. I'm just gonna hyphenate experience is where things take a I can't see the bottom of the paper. Oh, sorry. Yep. Okay, I'm going to reposition myself to be able to to see it. All right. Got because it. the experience right here creates every time we think about the experience, it creates an emotion. Which gets you into to act on something. Yes. Now, the the thing about emotions is our brains, we get attached to emotions. Okay. You got that. So we get attached to these emotions. And then because we're attached to the emotions, say if it was a negative experience or what we would view as a negative experience, we start blaming. This is, this is a big, big thing that we're going to dive into further on as a process as, as, as it unfolds and I explain it more and you get to understand it more. We start and this is we get attached to the emotions because – we blame the players instead of taking authorship of the brilliance of how our imagination created it all. So I'm going to write it out that, uh, yeah, we blame the players instead of taking authorship. Okay, and these words, the players of the game, I'm just using that as a easy way to explain where you're an authorship, that's a key word to, to remember. So every word that I'm underlining, these are extremely key words to be looking out for. So there's the experience that creates the emotions and the emotions of the experience we get we get attached to them and then these emotions make us start blaming the players of the game or the players or the um not 
if you're the author, then they are the um, characters. We're, we're blaming the characters or the players of the game instead of taking authorship. And, and the power of authorship, and when we blame the players instead of taking authorship, the brilliance of how our imagination created it all is lost. And so I'm going to write this out because this is, this is like the, the big, big bit of it. The brilliance... The brilliance of our, of how our imagination created it all. So we miss, sorry, I forgot to write the miss. Miss the brilliance. Of how our imagination created it all. Yes. And so, the only thing, and you'll see later on a little further down the road, the only thing we learn are just lessons like from the experience, like, um, I'm going to avoid such and such a person. So, the, I'm going to write, so, the only thing we learn are a few lessons. Okay, like, avoid, avoid such and such which is important but if that's the only thing you walk away with that's that's you're setting yourself up for a huge huge failure in the in the coming years what, of your life what's that first word that you word on the paper uh so i just like so uh, the only okay. thing i'm like is that four o's three o like what's yeah. that yep So now that's that's the outline. What does all this mean? The third point here. Our emotions, I'm going to shorten that, are what I like what we call here as boom moments. Our emotional state, like say if you all of a sudden just feel like giving up or just doing nothing or like I want to go crawl in bed or for me if I wanted to blame somebody for stealing this or taking this from me or not calling me back. When you have that emotional b burst of emotion, emotion, we call those and we'll go deeper into it, those are called boom moments because you're just like at the receiving end of a domino of feelings and then boom, you're in this feeling, this emotion, that emotion, these boom moments are emotions. These boom moments are our current programs. Boom. The that these are the things that are are running in our subconscious mind. So kind of going back to this right here, remember that picture? Mm hmm the emotional things that we have that we see that, that like seem to come out of nowhere or have been triggered by somebody, those are the boom moments that are triggered here and then affect our brain and then our actions. So they, they reside right here, those boom moments. It's not something that we're aware of, but usually just happens, seemingly happens out of nowhere. And so 
the goal is to be able to take the take emotions take the emotions and treat it like a gauge it's another big big concept here treating it like a gauge So if you remember the whole picture going backwards, okay, there's actually one little extra thing that we can add to make it even more understandable. Boom. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it like this. If you think of it as a, as a picture, okay, this is the last... Boom. You can see that, Anthony? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So then we're in the environment where idea can now become alive. And oftentimes we get, we just get stuck in, in emotion. from the experience. So pretty much what this says. So pretty much what this says is that we have this, uh, we have this experience, all these things, and then the emotion that we have about this, we get stuck into that emotion. And when we're stuck in these emotions, Lastly, can you take is... off the other papers or covering the paper you're writing? There we go. Yep. Get stuck. This is where, and this is how we create the boom moments. In our life, also known as paradigms. I like to call them your current lines of programming. Can you move your fingers? Oh, sorry. And so the goal, well, let me know when you're ready. Oh, hold on a second. Get stuck in emotion from experience. Here we go. Ready. Okay. And so the goal is you have your boom moment. This is your current programming. And so you want to catch that line of programming. The goal is to recognize the boom moment and then work our way backwards to remember and recall what was the original desire that I actually had. Okay. So it's like going back to the, the initiation of that program, yep. whenever you installed it, the day you installed it, basically you can imagine it like that. Yeah. What was that reoccurring thought that I put emotion into that eventually created it all. So you're, you take the emotion, you don't say it's good or bad. You're, you just treat it like a gauge because gauges are not good or bad in our car. And then, Work backwards towards what? And you're answering the question of what was my original desire? So off of treat working like a gauge, work backwards.
you could say the original sin almost. You know how the, you know the original sin in re religion. <laughs> Let's keep religion out of our kind of. <laughs> I'm just saying, like that concept yeah, yeah. of original sin, that it would actually that term would perfectly apply for it because, metaphorically speaking, this experience or whatever or this thought yep. is causing you now pain. So yeah, yeah. What was my torch? desire got it and so why are we going to do this well there's three real reasons uh, three points to why this is so key first one is to recognize and realize you were the author the amazing author or the amazing sorry you're trying to recognize and realize that you are the author the, and the amazing power of your mind so let's say just recognize so why do you want to go through this process because it's going to help you recognize and realize you capital U <laughs> were the author all along And the amazing Opa. power of your mind. So the first reason is to recognize and realize you were the author all along in the amazing power of your mind to create. Once, once you're starting to realize that you are the author and the power of your brain, then you want to take that. Then you're taking that and you're rewriting the experience. So say your experience, going back to this image right here, say this experience is something that quote unquote impacted you negatively going forward. If it's a negative one, the goal is then to take and the next step it's is to The goal is to basically change the meaning. Yes, it's, it's, rewrite it's not the experience. To say it's better, good. It's changing the meaning you derive from the experience. Yes. So rewrite the experience as positive. Okay. Because no matter how negative the experience, the experience was always your authorship. That's what you're recognizing. Which is why it's not good or bad. It's just unpleasant. I think yep. that, yeah, unpleasant or negative could be synonymous. Yep. And so, now, guess what? Ta-da! You have started to rewrite your old program. So, you... So, the fourth point is this. That now you have started to... Rewrite your old programming. Now, why did I say not? I didn't. Why did I say that you have? started to rewrite your old programming reprogramming actually rewriting the code in your brain comes into into the lab these two it's a two-part process part one is you're just gain, gaining an awareness right so once you go through this process for a particular uh, trigger or emotion that you have, say it's a, it's a negative emotion, you go through this process, it brings your awareness to, and then you reframe it to as positive. Next time you're in the right, right moment, right place, right time, and that emotion tries to kick in, and it will try to kick in because 
your body is used to it. Now you're taking your the information that you've realized and derived from the experience. I can actually part- speak on this exactly. This happened today, multiple yeah, times. I would like to hear about that, and uh, just just this last thing, and then I would definitely want to hear yeah. that because very I really want to hear it. And so part two, and the second part, which is the last thing we're writing down, is you're gonna have once you're aware. It's always it's it's all about now reminding yourself until the code is one hundred percent updated. Okay, <laughs> so reminding. That's perfect. I ran out of paper, so I'm cutting it up right now. One second. You can keep writing though. Yep, until the code. Okay, is one hundred percent updated. And now I know some people might be thinking, well, that's negative thinking. No, that's how our brain thinks because our body wants to create and recreate similar experiences as before. Um, it's going to try to trigger these thoughts. But now you've caught that old uh, code of pro- uh, that co- line, code of line. You've given it, you've rewritten it. And next time the old one comes in, you're going to be like, no, actually, here's the new code. And you remind yourself everything you recognize about that situation. So... Another way you could explain it as it's like when you install a new video player on your computer, mm-hmm. but your old video player still is set as default. So every time you try to launch a video, it tries to launch it with that program. You got to be like, no, no, no. And you got to shut it down and relaunch it with the right program, the new one that yep. you have. And so eventually you set, you know, you get in the, in a the computer, you can just change the default setting of the program. Yeah. But for us, our human brains, it takes a little bit more time um, to do that. Yes. Because it's not like every day you have the exact same emotions and feelings. They switch up based off of what you're experiencing that current day. Yeah. So because, so to, to reiterate, because our bodies want to get the same old feelings it's going to try to remind us of those old ways of thinking. But by reminding yourself of how you were the author of a particular experience, then the new code starts taking over. And soon enough, you become successful and you become a pro at rewriting your own brain's programming. And that's how you go from boom to bam. <laughs> One second. I'm just catching up. I had to write, uh, cut a little piece of paper. Yep. Code is 100 updated and then body wants old feelings and the reason the body wants old feelings is that's how it derives its sense of self it's so when you feel the same feelings that's what a personality is a personality is a person who thinks and acts a certain way which releases certain biochemicals and so that's that that old feeling thing just reminded me of Dr. George Spenza body wants old feelings remind yourself of the new code yeah, you could you could say it's like your brain automatically tries to get that old program running but manually you have to l- notify it no longer does this program need to run <laughs> yeah you're the administrator on your network and you see that you're you know some some, yeah. some program ran off that shouldn't be now you got to stop it or you can let it run off it's your choice so now you're yep. becoming a oh can you go oh. back a pro now you're becoming a pro at rewriting your 
your own range programs. Or programming. And that is the BAM! Yep. I got a little check it out. I'll show you. Oh it's gonna yeah. Be taped together like this. Here's here's what mine looks like. The full thing. There's boom. <laughs> so this is the image of it. You have a thought. You go through the experiences. Now your original thought can become reality. But because these experiences are viewed as negative, you start blaming your bad partner or your parents or your siblings. And so you get stuck in the emotion and you cannot create this thing that you initially thought about. So you get stuck in this little loop right here and it's like, and as you see the video, it gets all like fuzzy a and confusing. And, uh, or a rat in a hamster wheel or hamster yep. in a hamster wheel. So, Run, and, and running, that's, running. that's what we were, we were talking about before is if you're going through this, this, this circular thing where a can now become reality, but because you focus on negative emotions of it all and blaming people, not taking authorship, guess what? You're still thinking most likely about creating A. So life gives you another experience to make A happen. <laughs> but instead, now you blame even more people and even more people. And it gets worse and worse and worse. And then you're just like, like Arnold Schwartz. You're just like, I, what I do now? <laughs> oh, man. man. I tried to uh, cha change the camera f for for the Arnold's part, but my camera didn't change. <laughs> so yeah, what would I do now? <laughs> and so uh, that is the uh, introduction to this. It was perfect. I really, really liked it. Um, the one thing I actually wanted to share earlier when you were finished part one was um, at work today, I actually had that same, I don't want to do this code pop up probably like two or three times throughout the day but yep. every time it popped up this time i i was because i've written it out and everything and i'm now from that as soon as that feeling hit i just had this time like no like i this basically what i what i actually developed a little uh trick to helping myself snap out of it I'd be doing something that felt really monotone because I was caulking the windows and baseboards and um, patching holes and stuff. So we know how exciting very... that gets. Yeah, and it's <laughs> the same thing over and over. So you, you, your brain loses track of time because you're, you're in a kind of same area, move back and forth. And, it's, and mind you, the walls and ceilings in the house that I was working at, the same color. So it was just like... It was really starting to be like, Ugh. and then Monotonous. that program kicks in. I don't want to do this, and I'm just like, well, you just gotta finish this line. Just focus on this next one, and then just focus on this next one. So I basically micro. I I brought myself to the present moment instead of thinking about how I don't want to do this and how I'm feeling. I simply just focused in that exact moment on whatever I was doing. And just what's the next thing I need to do? What's the next thing? Just so that way it would keep my mind preoccupied. Yep. And it was interesting doing that within literally like a minute or two, I was back to good. So that, that was what was kind of just like, whoa. It's, it's just amazing how powerful your mind is. <laughs> yeah. Imagine like before any of this, you would let it get all the way down to I want to quit this i want to i want to just roll up in my bed i'm i had enough of this kind of mindset at that point i'd probably go out and smoke a cigarette or something it's <laughs> usually this, this is my kind of like whenever in, in construction work like whenever i have those like oh, i want to do this those would be the times i'd go and smoke a cigarette and then i'd be like all right now i'll go back and do it but it's like now it's like no i'm just micro focus on what you're doing because uh, essentially that's what I realize the trigger is. The trigger is you jumping into a macro perspective really quickly. Um, and, it, and it just too much information and context for, and it's not applicable to what I was doing in that moment. I'm by myself. No one else is there. I just got to keep going a little bit. 
like I don't I don't have a time deadline either. So it's not like rush, 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 rush. Um, so it was just like, it was a very interesting kind of uh, environment. But it was like exactly perfect where I got to actually test out the stuff we've been writing and talking about. So, you know, before I started this video series with uh, Lexi, everybody, I finally made a very serious decision. Like, I, I got to work on figuring out what the crap is going on with my mind because, like, I realized I have issues, I have things, old pro, and by issues I mean these old programs that run up, that just mess up progress, momentum, and things if, you know I've been working towards. Now that that happened for years already. So it was just like, I finally reached a point where like, all right, I'm going, I decided I need to figure this out. And then in the process of figuring out, I called Alexi, he was just sharing him his stuff, and the next thing we know, we're like, hey, let's record some videos and just like go through this thing. And then eight days in, I'm now having work experiences perfectly. Now, mind you, I don't choose where I get to work in that, but I am still the author of it, is what I'm seeing now. And that's what makes life so much more fun once you go through this process and you actually experience it live action, is once you've lived it, you're like, holy shit, even though you have all this stuff happening in your life that seems like it's out of your control, because it is, actually, if you're focusing on what you're trying, what you really want and desire, you'll then begin to see how everything around you is happening exactly for that. You know, it's interesting you just mentioned that... Um... I remember you were talking about you were working in your previous job that you were working. You just your goal and desire, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, was simply just to get away from that into and get into a different uh, environment. That was your goal. And then life gave you this opportunity for this job, right? The current one I have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was that was actually exactly it. I was thinking about it for three months. And that, I, I was laughing about this because, like, three months, I'm like, all right, this is not ideal. I don't like it for X, Y, and Z. I'm grateful as, f you know, can be for it because... I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm <laughs> so super, gra you. super grateful. <laughs> but it's like... <laughs> Thank you. It, you know, you start to realize this isn't my thing. So that thought mixed with the emotion... But I was patient. I didn't act out, and I had that kind of feeling like just wait, and the opportunity would come up. And what do you freaking know? A job opportunity walks up that ends up transitioning smoothly, and it all happened right before this corona stuff, which is perfect because if I had been at my old job while this happened, I wouldn't have a job right now. So it's just so, like you uh, just start seeing, like, you're like, whoa. My feeling back, I didn't even know about the corona stuff happening. Like, you know, no one knew it was going to happen. But, like, that desire is now the reason I still have work right now. <laughs> it's just and like... The, and the reason I brought it up is imagine all, at that point, if I remember correctly in what you were always sharing, I wouldn't know what you were thinking completely, but it seems that your desire, your desire was just to get a job that would be in the similar, or just in the similar field, but away from the current uh, people that you were working with and that's exactly what you got and now you're seeing a bunch of other things you're like i don't like this like this just shows to me how important like just uh how important it is to be very definite it's like careful what you wish for because you just might get it all you wanted a different job with the different people and that's all you got because that's all you wanted <laughs> and you really wanted it i remember that for sure yeah. So it's like it, it pushes now into it's like it's be very. You know, it's funny. It, you know, to you know, to top this off, them. I've been really, really wanting to see my girl. Apparently, tomorrow they might be going out of lockdown that they've been in, which they've had a terribly hard lockdown. Five a.m. to five p.m. is movement time. Monday through Friday, after five p.m., home, and then weekends were I think forty-eight hour lockdown um, after a certain point, but. <laughs> Fingers crossed I can fly out soon and go see her, but um yeah. So it's, what'd uh, you think of this overall? While I'm waiting overall? for the Yeah, for this whole video, just to recap, I really liked it. It um the only thing that I would say explaining it 
doing it on the small pieces of paper made it really confusing and hard to follow. Maybe using a board in the future, and then just yeah, I'm, a big I'm considering getting one, a whiteboard. Yeah, I, I I was thinking about that today. It's it's gonna be a good investment. Um, so that was the only thing I would say about that. Um, as to the actual content, it was really easy to follow, and I really liked how you incorporated the stuff from the previous process days that we talked about, like. You know, you, you hinted at the domino effect when you mentioned the boom moment. Like, the way you laid up the information was perfect. I really liked it. It kind of unfolded. It felt like you were taking nice, easy steps down a perfectly engineered stairway kind of okay. kind of dealio. So that was really yeah, so, good. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, one of the reasons I included all those different words is because... We're going to be using them more and more in the future. No, I, I figured that on. was the reason. It, and that's why I said it, you did it very well because it's you conveyed the exact information you needed to convey, but you also laid the groundwork to then connect this visual and analogy to further things that you're building off of. So I think it's it's really well done. You do a good <clears> job here. Nice one. Fist bump. Pew. Awesome. Yeah, we got six minutes left on, on this clock. So, yeah, that's uh, that was... Um, I think that was the last piece of the puzzle for me as as to in relation to working backwards. From this point yeah, on, I don't think you can go any forwards. further back than this. Yep, so this is just um, from initial, hey, I got this program to here's step one, just get the basic concepts. Uh, so two I have an idea. Did... Yep. Quick, quick thing. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, people that come to the clarifiers are probably going to be at different mental levels. So there should be a way where they can do a quick quiz or a test, which can then give them a basically a rank, essentially, say, or a, through a certain number, you know, A through B or 1 through 4 or whatever. And being that, like, people at A need to start all the way at the back because, like, they kind of don't get it. And But then, or do you just want everybody to go through it from... Um. So my big vision is not for me, just say, in this case, to teach you as a human being. My goal is to lead you through the, the process itself so that you understand the big picture, but also how, how to apply it, but also how to be able to explain it to somebody. Okay, if, if that's the goal, then yeah, definitely have to go to the back course. So yeah, yeah I mean, my, my goal is what... what so if that's goal? the goal, then you're doing a very good job because this, this is very easy. To, I could explain this to somebody if I were to write it out one more time. I'd be good to Yeah, go. so tomorrow so, you'll be... We'll do that. Yeah, that's what you're going to be doing tomorrow. If, you could, if you're up for that, that'd be very awesome. So that way I could be... I'm not just up for it. I'm like 100% in. In. Oh, not just up, but I'm in. In. I'm all in. In. Yeah. So, yeah, I think this is uh, definitely moving along very well from being able to actually explain it the way it's coming come together. Um, I like this. I am... Uh, let's just say I'm very happy with this process because it's been the biggest challenge um, is to explain the paradigm shifting process, shifting your programming. So Yeah, yeah it's been very helpful for me in understanding those concepts, and it's also been helpful in the sense of pushing me towards really taking my mental health seriously. Um, I actually ended up getting a therapist today through Talkspace, finally. It's the first time in my life I've nice. done that. As you know, in our, our culture, it's a little bit stigmatized. So I'm going to give that a go for a month. And I feel like all this stuff we've been doing is going to be perfect data to use for that. So it's just like, nice. life has been giving me... I've been authoring everything I freaking need to get better finally. So when you perfect. finally decide to get better, you'll realize you're authoring it in every experience you're having. Yes. Well, on that note, we have a minute left. Any final words? Peace, love, and happiness, everybody. Awesome. Yes, thank you for joining, guys. Tomorrow, again, we're going to be live at 1 p.m. Uh, Hawaii time, 4 p.m. 7 Hawaii. EST and 4 Cali. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So 147. Join us. <laughs> there we go. So this is our video number eight. And uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We got four more left in this Woo -woo! process. Thank, thank you very much. And I will see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Peace, everybody. Tony. Peace out.